Hello and welcome to Through the Telescope, the podcast that puts the lens on astronomy. I'm Rose Waugh and I'm an astrophysicist and science communicator. And I'm Elliot Bruce and I'm neither of those things, but I'll be trying to find out why we should even care about astronomy. We'll be exploring some of the big topics in the field in little manageable pieces and have some fun along the way. So, whether you know your red lines from your red shifts, or you're not quite sure what the difference between astronomy and astrology actually is, join us as we launch ourselves into the cosmos and try not to burn up on re-entry. Through the Telescope is sponsored by Pic Astro, the astronomy and astrophotography image sharing app, dedicated to your images of the cosmos no matter what stage you are on your journey around the universe. No ads, spam, or fake accounts. So, Ram, in this episode, a special episode to uh, commemorate, if that's the right word, mm -hmm. to celebrate the date of the 14th of February. It's a very important day in the calendar. Do you want to tell us about the significance of the 14th of February? It is the anniversary of the pale blue dot photograph. Yeah. And it's also Valentine's Day. And also the anniversary of the Valentine's Day massacre. Nice. Yeah. Chicago Let's monsters. talk about the first one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the pale blue dot photograph, pretty famous. So paint a picture, literally. <laughs> uh, what is the pale blue dot? Like what picture? does it look like? Yeah. Is, it, is it actually called the pale blue dot? Yeah. Or... Okay. Has it got a dot? Yeah. Is it pale blue? Yes. All right. Well, sorted. That's that. We can finish the episode now. <laughs> so see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is said dot? And why is it pale blue? <laughs> the said dot is Earth. Okay. It's pale blue because of Raleigh scattering of our atmosphere. I thought you were just going to say because the Earth's blue. <laughs> <laughs> so the picture is a photo taken on the 14th of February, okay. 1990. So actually, before Oz. Before Oz. Proper history. Uh, by the Voyager 1 spacecraft. And the photo was taken from about 40 and a half AU away from planet Earth, which is about 6 billion kilometres or 3.7 billion miles. I had to go and look up that conversion. That's, uh, that's useful for UK, US and possibly other mad people in the world. <laughs> yeah, AU means a lot more to me at this, so. uh, this point than... Kilometers yes. or miles does. When you get into the billions, and I assume this is American billions again, 10 to yeah. the... What's that? 10 to the 9. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and we so we just... The previous episode, we talked about the solar system. And yes. so this is beyond uh, Neptune. So we're pretty far out at this point. Yeah, we're pretty far away. So, yeah, it's a photo that probably most people listening to this have seen. I think a lot of people have seen it. Um, anyone who hasn't seen it should go and look it up right now. Is that you giving them a chance <laughs> to go and look it up? That's my pause, yeah. Um, here's my really rubbish description. Okay. It's mostly a black photograph. That's space. Yep. There's a sunbeam passing through the image. Ooh. And planet Earth is a tiny speck. It's actually smaller than one pixel in the image. Does that count? And, uh, yeah, the sunlight isn't, you know, from... Well, it is from the sun, but it's a... An artefact would be the fancy word. It's an artefact mm -hmm. that appears because sunlight is reflected off the... 
spacecraft itself. So there's multiple streaks of slightly different colours. Mm -hmm. And the Earth is in one of them. And those streaks are from light bouncing off things, as opposed yeah. to actually what space yes. looks like, as it yeah. were. When the photo was taken, mm. I thought you'd like this story, um, it was actually stored on board, originally. Okay. In a tape recorder. When you say a tape recorder, is that a like a little recorder. cassette? Like... I mean, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> They probably didn't, like, buy it from Sony. But... It's not like a Walkman or <laughs> whatever. Um, and then it was sent back to Earth um, after this. What, the cassette? No, <laughs> no, not the cassette, the, the information. Like a message Thank in a bottle. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, but it was delayed a little bit by a couple of other missions because they... Um, the the team working on Voyager One used and still do mm. NASA's Deep Space Network. Okay, which sounds mega fancy. Um, it's basically the airways of communication for spacecraft with Earth. So it's like in Star Trek when they say we've got a message coming through on subspace. Yeah, I suppose so. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, and these other these two other missions were given priority over Voyager One's me- message, so okay. had to hold on to its information and its little they didn't tape need, recorder. Didn't need the pictures so much. Uh, and then it sent back to to Earth. It's sixty frames. Six, that's what it took. Okay. Um, and this was between March and May of that year. So, yep. And it took the messages five and a half hours to get to get home at the speed of light because. Jeez. Yeah. That's quite a commute. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then three of these frames, three of these sixty, were were pictures taken using different fit, uh, different color filters. Okay. But were. Otherwise, you know, kind of like the same image. And these were combined to make the image that we know and love as the pale blue dot. So the Earth is less than a pixel. Mm. So I'm guessing we're not seeing the moon. Well, well. Actually, further analysis showed that the, the moon is actually in the picture. Okay. It can't be seen by eye. Right. But if you use some clever processing, right, you can at... bring it out. Artifacts within artifacts, which is pretty insane. That, yeah, I don't really get how any of these photographic techniques work, but I'm glad they do. Yeah, yeah, that's to be honest, quite a lot of astronomy gets like that. Really, mm. it's far outside my um, technical know-how, but yeah. So um, you said that there were sixty frames, but only three of them are put together. Mm-hmm. For the Earth. So what's the other 57? So the pale blue dot is, you know, kind of seen as one image, even though, like you say, it's kind of three combined. But it's part of a larger um, a larger scale picture, if you like, called the family portrait. So the family portrait is more like a series of pictures. Okay. But... <laughs> But it can be combined into one picture as well. Okay. Um, That's very. Yes. That feels very art. You kind of need to. You kind of need to look it up to see what I mean. But you. It's also known as the portrait of the planets. So what they did was they they took the sixty frames mm. that were taken, and they put them into one image that shows the innermost six planets. Around the sun. Okay. But it also shows their relative positions. So one individual picture doesn't have, like, the sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Earth. Right. It's more like when you look at the picture, they're kind of like... (laughs) Kind of like what would happen if you, you know, like, had post-it notes and then you, like, stuck them together on an... Yeah. On a big thing. Yeah, and a kind of conspiracy theorist sort of mood board. 
Yes, kind of mood board vibes, yeah. <laughs> or um, a jigsaw puzzle where you've not got all the a pieces. A jigsaw puzzle, yeah, and it's not all coloured in. Exactly. Mm. So it's like a series of pictures, but it can also be combined into one, showing what the solar system looked like at that exact moment, kind of. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Voyager 1 was pretty awesome, really. What is Voyager 1, then? I feel like we talked about Voyager 1 a couple of times. Yeah, we mentioned it, I think, in the last episode, um, which, obviously, everyone should go and check out. Mm -hmm. But in case people haven't listened to that episode or whatever, I suppose we should give it a little mention. Because it is, you know, it it is a very important um, part of astro history and and science and, and humanity, really. So it was a spacecraft that was launched in 1977. Mm. There were actually two of them, the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, but they travel differently. They both have the same kind of missions, uh, or some parts of their missions are the same, but one of them travels vertically, Okay. pretty much. Not quite, but travels, you know, pretty... um, out of the the plane of the solar system. Oh, you know, I was thinking exactly the same <laughs> thing. I was thinking, what is up in space? And then I was like, uh, out of the plane of the... <laughs> yeah. So one travels, you know, pretty far out of the plane and the other travels less out of the plane. Okay. To try and give us more of a, a full picture of the solar system, I suppose. And the, the, well, Voyager 1's mission was to study the outer solar system and then to study interstellar space. Well, they were the, the two main missions because these missions always have multiple aspects. Yeah. Because, you know, it's you're spending so much money. money on them. Yeah. And you launch one thing, so we get it to do multiple things. Exactly, yeah. So by 1979, it encountered Jupiter and the, the Jovian system, Jupiter and its moons. By the next year, in 1980, it had you know, been to Saturn. So it takes two years to get... It's launched in 77, it mm-hmm. takes two years to get to Jupiter, mm-hmm. and then just one year to get to Saturn. Mm-hmm. Doing pretty good. Yeah. So And then by November of that year, mm. its primary mission um, was declared completed. Nice. Because it had been to Jupiter, it had been to Saturn. It was the first to take images of these planets and their moons um so that that, you know that aspect of it was considered well and truly complete and successful but it's still going okay as i think that was what we talked about in the solar system it's it's still going it's traveling about where it ends very fast yes uh miles per hour i'm afraid i've not put that into kilometers per hour but it'll be a bigger uh, number yeah very fast. <laughs> I'm going to say 70 kilometres per hour, as It's left the solar system. 70,000, sorry, not 70 <laughs> kilometres an hour. <laughs> Slightly different. Uh, That's it's, a guess. It's left the solar it's system. It's left the solar system, as we chatted about. And um, as of February mm. 2023, it's been operating for 45 years and five months. Okay, so... In 77, it's launched. Three years later, its primary mission is completed. Ten years later, it takes some snazzy photos. And then it just keeps on going. Keeps on going. Still going. Is it taking any more pictures for us of interstellar space? It's a bit sad, actually. It's also not, but (laughs) but it is. Uh, These were the, the last images from the probes. The very last images... Are we not going to get some pictures of the, the Kuiper belt or nope. the Oort cloud? This is pretty dark. It was the last image because, A, taking images, taking good images, useful images, is very hard beyond this point. Mm. And, B, the probes aren't really going to pass very much <laughs> <laughs> of interest beyond 41 AU from us. Um, but, but... Taking pictures is just very difficult. Objects that are far from the probe would be very faint. 
which makes them hard to photograph. And plus, you know, the cameras have to move with the object over the exposure time to take the photo because right. the exposure times increase very quickly mm. as they get fainter and fainter. Mm. And that's pretty difficult. It gets more and more difficult. And then, you know, on top of that, communicating with the probe takes longer and longer yeah. and longer because it's getting further away and it becomes harder as well because it's further away. So just all in all, it's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so after this photo, NASA commanded that the two cameras were powered down forever to save power, basically, because Don't need you it. could use that power to to um, Keep it going. fuel other instruments that would be needed yeah. as the the journey continues for the probe. But yeah. I don't know, but it is kind of sad, you know? Yeah. But it's like it turns around and takes that photo. That's its last photo. Its last photo of us. Its last, you know? Is it still talking to us in other ways? Yeah, they still... They still um, communicate with it. Um, but it just, it must just take so long now. I mean, mm. I'm not sure exactly how far away it is right now with, you know, numbers off the top of my head, but you can track it online. It tells you, it shows you where, you know, how many, how far away it is. And it must take a very long time. I mean, you could do the maths, I suppose, if you... Yeah. If you find out how far away it is, that's the distance, Yeah. you know how quickly you can send a message because mm -hmm. the message travels at the speed of light. So three times ten to the eight metres per second. And then um, you can calculate how long that would take mm. for the light to get there. Because speed equals distance over time, so... But then you have to remember that once you've sent something to it, if you want a reply, yeah, it takes the same amount of time to then get a reply as that's, well. That's like the aliens thing, isn't it? It's like we've detected signal from a system however many thousands of light years away. Let's reply. They're all dead by the time yeah. it's reached us, let alone by the time mm -hmm. our thing reaches them. Yeah. Also, um, Voyager 1, I just remembered, is in... Um, it's got quite a vital uh, role in Star Trek, the motion picture, which was the first Star Trek film. And it's also just a rehash of one of the original series' episodes. Yeah, that's and not surprising. It's not that great, to be honest. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I feel like that the idea was it's got Voyager 1 in it, so yeah, that's it'll rake in the money... It'll pull on the heartstrings. Yeah. It'll, you know, it'll attract people. Uh, and then that was, that was it. They're like, it's got Voyager 1 in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was a kind of nice, like, oh. It's like an end sort of reveal. More than, sorry, spoilers. But, uh, but like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do. I, I do. But so yeah. Voyager 1 took the blue dot mm -hmm. photo what, 30, 33 years ago Yeah. to this day of publishing, which might actually be the day before Valentine's Day, but whatever. Mm -hmm. The other thing about the Blue Dot photo is that um, there's a festival named after it at mm -hmm. Jodrell Bank. And there is. in our next episode, we're going to be talking about Jodrell Bank. So. Yeah. So there's a nice... Uh... This episode, this special, has mm -hmm. actually tied in really nicely between a few of the, the recent ones and the oh. upcoming ones. Yeah. You know I'm a romantic. Uh, I do. <laughs> so yeah. I thought, how better to end this episode than by reading the, the quote from Carl Sagan from his book the famous speech that has also been read by many other, you know, scientists since then. Because I feel like it 
uh, just a nice way to end, you know? Are you going to do a Carl Sagan voice? Well, I'm not, no. Do you want to read it? No, I don't know what Carl Sagan sounds like. You can just read it in your normal voice. Oh, no, you go for it. (laughs) Okay. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there, on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Karsig? And on that note, Happy Blue Dot Day. And happy Valentine's Day. So that just about wraps things up for this episode. Please, can we encourage you to subscribe to Through the Telescope wherever you find your podcasts, and, if you like, you can leave us a nice positive review as well. It really helps the show, and it makes it easier for more people to find us. Feel free to send us any comments, questions, or suggestions of things or people you'd like to hear about or from in future episodes. Or perhaps to put yourself forward to chat about your own astro research or experiences. As always, you can find us on Instagram at Through the Telescope Podcast, or you can find me at astrophysicist underscore rose. You can also find us on Twitter at The Telescope Pod, and you can contact us by email at Through the Telescope Podcast at gmail.com. And with that, we'd like to thank you very much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye. Bye.